Welcome to the ordinance meeting for uh, Thursday, April 18th. Uh, can we have a call to order? Uh, well, I'm, this is a call to order. <laughs> we have roll call. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Johnson. Oops, I'm sorry. Nope. I said the wrong one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, my name is Katarina. Councilor Katarina. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be here. Um, before I do the approval, I just want to add something very quickly before I forget. Um, I just want to remind people in the audience that the job of the ordinance committee is to sift through and refine ordinances. We're sort of like the saucer, where we're kind of putting things together before we send them up to uh, the town council. And I know I, I thank people for their patience um, with some of the, the um, items that we've had before us, and it's gonna take a little more time with some of them, but just so you understand the process, all right? Um, <clears throat> and when we do have uh, public comment, I'm gonna ask that people keep it to more or less three minutes for public comment. That being said, approval of the minutes for March 21st. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, public comment. Now, unlike town council, we don't comment prior to each item. We ask for comment now on any item before the uh, ordinance committee. So if you want to make any comments, approach the podium. Let us know who you are and um, your comments. Hi, my name is Shelley Pelletier from 10 Snow Canning Road in Scarborough. Um, I'm here to comment on the ordinance for the uh, recreational use of medical marijuana ordinances that are coming up. Uh, there are a few items of concern I would like to address. I've read through the ordinance. Um, one is the medical marijuana cultivation facility. Uh, what do you propose I do with my product if they're not allowing me to sell it? Is there a requirement for other like businesses uh, that you are setting the same restriction on them as you are on me, such as nurseries and farms, do you not allow them not to sell their product either? The medical marijuana store, you're asking for each store to be 300 feet apart. There are 14 growers in the 10 Snow Canning Road building. If they cannot open a retail store, medical retail store, uh, then what do you suggest they do with their product? Is this requirement the same for other like businesses, for mom and pop stores, grocery stores, and retail stores? Do you require them to be 300 feet apart? Also, will there be an overlay showing where these establishments are permitted? And lastly, if there is no state license available after this ordinance is adopted, what becomes our, of our existing businesses because of not having the proper paperwork available to apply for the local license? Is there going to be a grace period allowed? And then I would like to review a few, uh, a few facts. One is that the survey that you had the residents fill out, there were approximately 2% of the residents that had filled them out. And second, that the two pu public meetings that you had there were more growers in attendance than there were residents. Mm -hmm. You draw your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I would like you to state that, I would, I would just like to state that, we, that what we do is legal. We grow a legal product and we sell a legal product. We have obeyed by all the state laws and have been inspected and passed by the state and local authorities. We are not asking any special favors all we ask is that we are on, we, all we ask is that the ordinance being voted on is the same as any other ordinance for other like businesses. We are only asking for a level playing field, and that is all. Thank you. Thanks. Shelley, can I ask you one question? Yeah. Um, I know this is a little unusual, we don't do this in council. Um, you mentioned that if we don't have a state license, uh, what, I know I should know the answer to this, and I'm, I may have to and Larissa probably does. And Larissa may know. Do or you may know not. what's going on with the state licensing right now? <laughs> Months. And that's why you brought it up? Months. We're, we're, 
we are waiting on the state. They insist that they are making progress, that um, they are planning on this calendar year having that process wrapped up. But as it is only April, I, I would concur with Ms. Pelletier's statement that months is likely. The okay. reason why I bring it up is because your, your date, your shooting date was June to have this wrapped up and hopefully the ordinance mm -hmm. in place by June from, from talking to you. I, I, know that that's, I know that that's a shooting date, but I, I have mean, been accused of um, optimism many times in my life. But that's the date <laughs> I have in my mind, thinking, okay, that's, yeah. that's the earliest that it would be. So I called um, Ginger at the Maine Medical uh, Marijuana Program and asked her about the licenses because you're not, you're not allowing the retail recreational. I asked her about the medical retail. And she said right now there's not an application available. And the only license that they really have is our caregiver license. So my thought is that if these ordinances become, as you say, become in effect, then, and the, the state is months behind, then what happens to us? I can't apply for a license because I don't have the proper paperwork from the state to give you to yeah. apply for that license. <coughs> Am I shut down? I don't know, and I would really like to know. That's, that's, that's why I ask. That's why we want to make sure that we're covering our bases. So. All right. Okay. Anyone else have any? Do you mind? No, I, I, had any a follow, I had a follow-up question. So what are you... Do you mind being the... <laughs> yeah, it, uh, and I know I had the same reaction that you <clears throat> did in terms of seeing ordinance language. I wasn't really expecting we would see it this quickly. So... Um, um, and I I'm, I'm have probably uh, as many, if not more, questions about it than, than you do, but you're in the business already. So what do you do now? I mean, what do you do before or since the time that the state approved use and sale uh, to, I can today? Sell. I, I can sell to my patients right now. It is legal for me, for my patients, to come inside my space and sell. And you're telling me I can't. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we're telling you anything just yet because we haven't really. Yeah, well, the ordinance, yeah. the way the ordinance is written, right. is written, is telling me I can't if I can't do that any longer. If this, if that is how it's going to be written. So I understand. I understand your reaction. Let me just respond to that, if I may. Uh, and I think Jean Marie made the point at the very outset is that uh, it's a process, and. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings where this has been a topic and we're, we're just getting up to speed with it. So I know other towns have, have refined and actually passed, you know, mm -hmm. or implemented ordinances and we frankly are not there yet. Uh, so, so the only thing I ask is if you could uh, be patient with the process and patient with us uh, as we work through it. And, um, oh, I've been patient. Uh, I've been oh, yes, you I have. You have. I've been patient. I know you have. <laughs> so, uh, but I've, I've learned anything. Uh, it was, it's been a hard lesson for me, and I haven't mastered it yet. Things do have sort of their own timing uh, when it comes to stuff like this. So, but thank you for your comment. So, yeah. Thank you. Do you want to add? So I don't have a question per se, other than I tried frantically to capture all of your questions. Um, what's always helpful for me is if we get them in writing from you. Um, oh, sure. That way, you know, I can just print the email, I have it, and as we start to work through things, uh, it doesn't get lost. Yeah, so I can that do that. Great. Yeah, that would be great. I can send it to you, Larissa, and then you can go ahead and dispense she it. She will yeah. okay. <laughs> expediently get that to us. Okay. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. Uh, any other public comments on anything on the agenda? Your name and address? Sure. Hi. My name is John Burke, uh, 16 Forecaster Way. Uh, I am a, uh, obviously, a resident of Scarborough. Uh, I'm actually a graduate of Scarborough High School, uh, and I'm also a licensed attorney and cannabis consultant. So those who might have questions about cannabis, I can probably answer some of those questions for you, including some of the questions the committee had today about the licensing for medical, uh, from the medical marketplace. For example, there's actually language in the uh, amended um, Medical Marijuana Act uh, that allows manufacturing businesses, for example, to be able to operate without a state license so long as they have provided the intent mm -hmm. to the state. Uh, and I believe there's other language in there as well, um, though I don't have the specific site say because I wasn't That's prepared to talk about it. So there is language in there built in for medical businesses to operate. There is not the case for adult use, but 
uh, for medical there is. And it's a, it's a completely different marketplace. And one of the things, um, as, you, as, you both, as all three of you know, I wrote you a letter today to sort of outline some concerns I have with the ordinance. I have others, but I felt like those were some that I really want to get your immediate attention to. And um, I, we, I, one thing with it that I think that we should consider here is medical marketplaces are going to be substantially different than the adult use marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and so with a medical, it's patient focused. With adult use, it's consumer, uh, as many consumers you can get. So when we're developing these rules, I think there definitely should be some kind of consideration between those two. And I appreciate the caregivers and, um, and dispensary owners who come in and discuss this because they really are different than what the adult use marketplace will ultimately end up becoming. Um, I hope that you get an opportunity to review the letter. If not, maybe you know afterwards. But um, I don't want to reiterate each concern here. I am happy to answer any questions you might have, either privately or today. I'll be here the whole time. Um, but one of the things that I am hoping to learn from you today as it relates to the adult use marketplace is why in the current version of the ordinance, uh, there is a prohibition on adult use cannabis retail stores. Uh, there is a definition using the marijuana establishment de definition that was in the adult use statute, but under the modified version of that definition in the ordinance, it was removed. So it seems to suggest that we're opting out of that, or I should say not opting in is the proper terminology. So I'm hoping to learn more about that today. Um, the approval process as well, at least with regard to the adult use side, you apply for a license at the state, takes roughly, they say, roughly 90 days, or at least that's what they're rejecting. And then if you meet all those standards, they will issue a provisional license that does not allow you to operate. Instead, what it will do is they will give an opportunity for them, for the applicant, to uh, pay the licensing fee at that point in addition to provide the state the municipal approval mm -hmm. so they can go ahead and get the state license. So I'd like to see some clarification on that in the ordinance as it relates to what approval means from the state uh, in the, this context. Uh, I didn't see any language about zoning. Uh, so I, I, didn't, I saw some language about distances between schools and, and it seems to model a lot of what South Portland has already done. Uh, so I'm familiar with that, but I didn't see if there's any restrictions on uh, cultivation facilities can only be in industrial areas, for example. Uh, and then uh, another issue I was hoping that maybe the committee would discuss today or may has already information on is licensing fees. Uh, as the committee may be aware, there are pretty significant licensing fees, certainly more so in the adult use space than the medical. but. In both contexts, both medical and adult use are going to have to invest substantially in new infrastructure. The seed to sale tracking system is going to be an expense, expensive investment. Mm -hmm. um, more so with the adult based on the uh, plant counts, but still it's going to be pretty expensive for caregivers. Uh, and so I'm just interested to see what this, uh, the, this committee is thinking about. And if it has looked at fees, um, has it looked at South Portland as some guidance as to their fees, which you know, are reasonable compared to other communities that I've reviewed. But again, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to you guys have anything? I did read your, your letter. Great, uh, thank you. And thank you. And I was just looking, I made some hand scratches, hand scratches on it, but <laughs> I don't think I have any particular questions for you at this point, but thank you for your input. I, I did have a question, if I may. Sure. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, so, I, I read your letter, and um, uh, I think you raised some fair points. Um, but I did notice in your letter you, was, you assumed that, well, if it's okay for medical, then it should be uh, okay for adult use. It, am I kind of reading it that way? What you're suggesting, how, how the ordinances should be drawn, if, uh, if medical is okay, then why should it be any different for adult use? Right? I think so. you're referring specifically to my first concern about the adult use stores versus, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I wasn't here at the prior meeting, so I wasn't involved in those discussions, so that's my apologies. Um, but just the, even though they serve completely different markets, the sale of cannabis is still happening within the community. 
So I'm, I was more trying to make the point of at least addressing a c common concern I saw in that survey was the children. And having two children myself, I certainly think of a lot of things that I want them to avoid. But I wanted to sort of make the point of if we're going to allow the retail s uh, sales on the medical side, then I, I have to under better have a better understanding why we're not going to do the same for the adult use. Uh, so, and then of course some of those other suggestions as well. Um, the odor management, uh, I'm sure some of these cultivators could talk about to you about the, the challenge beside that, but hopefully my proposal will alleviate some of those concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone have any public comments on any, anything on the agenda? Going, going, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison Bristol, 6 Bayview Avenue. On a different topic, yeah. um, starting with a different topic, um, looking at the uh, site plan review ordinance uh, proposed language. Um, first of all, thank you for making to Jay, where's Jay? I know I saw Jay, for uh, making this change. And I wanted to uh, ask if we might. Uh, uh, tweak it a bit more so it says 10 business days versus 10 days because basically if you drop it on a Friday you're still getting a week with the weekends in there so that would be helpful and thank you very much and then um, I also did want to make a couple of comments on the um, marijuana uh, marijuana ordinance questions um, and first of all I wanted to I wasn't a full-time resident in Scarborough in 2016 when the state voted to legalize marijuana but I did want to uh, reiterate or mention again that the town of Scarborough voted no to legalize you know the town itself voted no and um, the percentages there were 12,754 people who voted in Scarborough, 52.4% voted no, 47.6% voted yes. Statewide, the margin was smaller with 49% of 49.7% voting no to 50.3% voting yes. So less than 1% of the state population legalized marijuana, where 4.8% of Scarborough voted no. Um, I also wanted to make a couple of observations from the information meeting that we had and um, also from the uh, last meeting. So if we had 268 responses to the survey and the impetus to move all of this forward seems to come to the, from that survey that seems to be, you know, a somewhat small um, segment of the population. And um, I don't know that too much has been communicated since I mean, I certainly didn't even know the survey was there uh, at the exit poll for the November election, and I don't think there's been too much uh, additionally sent out so people in town, you know, understand that all of this is in development. Um, the other thing that I thought was telling and, and um, was mentioned here, of at the evening information uh, session, I'm going to say there were about 40 people there, and I know Larissa was inviting people to take the survey and asked who were uh, Scarborough residents. And I think maybe seven people raised their hand out of the people who were assembled. And so, I mean, to me that is very telling that it's not Scarborough residents necessarily that are pushing the idea forward of economic development here in Scarborough, um, you know, through either medical or adult use marijuana. And um, I just think it's important to get the town involved. It's a huge question, you know, no matter what side of the coin you're on, it's a huge question. And I think it's very important to get, um, you know, the town more engaged, maybe even a referendum vote on it, because it's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very big question. And in looking at the um, draft of the ordinance, it's, you know, way too much to to absorb in one sitting. But one of the things I would mention with the performance standards, I think it's important before the performance standards are um, considered that the overlay, you know, they talked about uh, do doing it as an overlay zone. 
to, to see what the overlay is before you can consider the standards. And I would also say that uh, with the separation from sensitive uses, there's no separation from residential. So if you have a mixed use development where retail might be next door to residential, you know, there's no, um, there's nothing in here that, that uh, addresses that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on anything on the agenda? All right, we'll close out uh, the public comment. And if we could start with item five, discussion on amendments to chapter 1016, garage yard sale ordinance. Laura Sutherland. Yes, so this is, um, this is a repeat agenda item from last month. Uh, I understood from counselors that you had some questions that you wanted answered about this has been brought forward to us by the very honest people of the Lions Club, wishing to, um, well, truthfully, um, wishing, eventually, yes, please. So um, I reached out to our um, Lions Club member, Ms. Messier, and she agreed to come and answer questions about, I understood that there were questions about how often does the Lions Club hope to have these events and what do they kind of look like, and so I invited her to come. I've given you an ex a dra a I've given you the ordinance as it currently stands with no suggested language. I think I understood from last month's meeting that the suggested language that was brought forward last month was not of interest, so I've removed that out. So we're starting with a clean slate so that we can kind of really think about if there is interest in making adjustments and if so, what those adjustments should be and where. So um, if Ms. Messier could. Yeah, please. <laughs> Is that right? Am I supposed to say something? Yeah. Yes, introduce yourself, please. Okay. And, uh... My name is Kathy Messier. <laughs> I am with the Scarborough Lions Club. Okay. So I think one of, we were looking right. for just a little bit more information, again, around how often um, the Lions Club intended to have these yard sales, what they look like uh, in duration, and what does it look like in between? Is it something that's left out all the time and covered and then open on the weekends because we've seen that in places right. around yeah. town so no just want to get a better sense of what right. it actually is we think we'd like to have a set of maybe eight a year mm -hmm. maybe like two in may two in june two in september and the chance that we could maybe hold an indoor sometime during the winter when everything's just dead. It's nothing that stays out and it's not the same people all the time that we're renting tables to. It's nothing and it's not actually us having the yard sale. We're renting the tables. That's how we're making our um, So it's more like a flea market sort of kind of kind of but it doesn't run even all weekend. It's just a one day mm -hmm. and we maybe won't have to, we won't maybe have that many, but we'd like that option that if we could have. Because I know now it stands at, what, four, two in spring and two in fall or something? Yeah. Um, two for each, um, two. two in a six month period. Two in six months. Two in a so six four month annual, period. annually would be yeah. the limit. Yeah. So and we would just like the option to sure. maybe be able to, I mean, yeah, one of them doesn't run well. We don't get we bring in like twenty bucks or something. We'd like to say, okay, well, let's try it again in a couple of weeks. Or mm -hmm. and you're using the proceeds for your it's own the lion, purposes. Yeah, it's for the Lions Club, Club, just the table rentals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Kathy, John? <laughs> and I think you know where our yeah. space is. We're in the back. We're, there's no parking right. on the street. There. Right. You don't even know what's going on unless we you see the sign. I live, up, I live right up past you, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, you don't I know, really I go see by it all the time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. just like that opportunity to be able to not be so limited. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, if you could remind me, I know one of the concerns was because we talked about what if we didn't do a limit on nonprofits or you know groups like the Lions Club or whatnot, uh, and do you remember what I do remember, yeah, was? there was, we tried to get into problem solving, um, and at the same time, I think we asked for more information to try to determine 
how much energy you want to put into this. So, um, so that was what I recall. I think one of the concerns was that if the language was simply to exempt nonprofits from the current ordinance, that there might be incentive for people less noble than our lions uh, to incorporate, as, uh, to, you know, to be nonprofits that are not actually community service nonprofits, but in, have yard sales, that there would be more of this activity happening than we wanted. That there would be a rush on people to register as not-for-profits in was, order to I, save I, five bucks for every time they have to get a permit. Yeah. Or to be able to have them, I think, more frequently was the, the I see. concern. So we'll get a permit. Please. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. But if what you're asking for, wouldn't that be permitted by the ordinance as I read it? What you had suggested to no more than? Only no? four times a year. Only four times four a year. Four times yeah. instead of eight. So I, I think for it's me. It's probably going to be six, but we'd like that just in case. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think, again, as uh, Larissa pointed out, I think our concern in the conversation was really around, again, not so much the Lions Club per se, but how then this could then be exercised or used by others to be running basically a yard sale every single weekend or ongoing. So the number eight wasn't necessarily no, there was no number. That, that's that's information we didn't have at the last meeting and that helps me, right. I can tell you a lot, because right. there's a there's a limit around it. There's a parameter and a criteria to follow. Is eight the right number? I don't know. It definitely makes me feel better. Um, and I could almost see well, I could meeting somewhere in the middle and maybe doing six. Or, or you could save eight because we allow Four um, within a year, what, and if we had, but but then to me it's like, what's your definition of a nonprofit charitable use? I don't think you can get. I know. You go down See, that road, you I get know. too specific, and then you're going to be somehow discriminating against somebody. So but what if a church wanted to have eight, you know, uh, to a year, I would have no problem with that. So you are so, are you saying we would change this so that everybody could have eight? Saying, we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, right. Not gonna, we can, the exception could be for the nonprofit. That's why I asked. Yeah, to yeah. allow them to do more than is currently permitted in the. Because the big concern is, again, we just don't want ongoing yard sales. Yep. Mr. Hamill, do you have any thoughts on this? I can see the wheels I do, turning. I do, but I don't know how much I want to. don't want to have ongoing yard sales either. Because yeah. we want to give the weekends up all the yeah. time. But we can get enough people to help some people. Mm -hmm. yeah, we don't want to turn into that either. So this, for me, just... I don't, re I don't remember the origin of this. I, I recall some discussion about it, but I you know, wasn't, wasn't really following the issue closely when we created the ordinance in the first I place. Can I can tell you. Uh, it had to do with there were some people in town, and there weren't many, but they were doing continuous yard sales. Yeah, I mean, all the weekend. time, yeah. and traffic in and out, and yeah. it was becoming like retail. Yeah. Uh, so the neighbors were concerned, so mm -hmm. this came into place. Yeah. To, that's where yeah. it came from. Yeah. So I want to be respectful of that. I mean, obviously, there was enough energy around it that an ordinance was created. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't really speak to how, how uh, strictly it's been enforced um, or how many issues we've had under the existing ordinance. I'm not sure I really want to go down that path. Um, but it does seem to me that we should have some discussion around it to decide how much, you know, uh, how much of a revision we want to make um, to accommodate the re request. I mean, I really appreciate the, you know, the club bringing it forward and asking for for guidance on it. Um, so another, another thing to do is, as uh, Ms. Foley uh, put forward, is kind of cut the baby in half, so to speak, if we want to say that, and say, and change it to be three yard sale permits every six month period and leave it at that and it's just not non-profits, whatever it's for anybody. So then there's six total in a yeah. year. And that would address your, that would give you, give you enough for what you're seeking? We can ask six, six month period. period. So you would have, Ju you'd have May, June, July, that would be three. And then, um, or two, I'm sorry, if you had, 
It would not accommodate their wish to have eight, two per month over the course of four months, but it would provide them with four more than they currently have under right. the ordinance. Yeah, I'd probably be more, more apt to do an annual um, number because it, my experience uh, yeah. is it's so, it's so <laughs> weather dependent. We live in Maine. Right. April can be 70 and you can have a yard sale in April or we could have a foot of snow um, as we've seen. So I'd be more apt to, for annual language. Mm -hmm. um, not overly concerned uh, that people mm -hmm. are going to be having a ton of yard sales in yeah. January when it's special. Like it'll be pretty much still in July and August yeah. because yeah. they're doing this at each yeah. So yeah. if people, if, if there was appetite here, I'd be willing to entertain language from Larissa at the, yeah. the next meeting to yeah. Yeah. Uh, switch that Talk to for the motion. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I, in fact, I do. That's how did you know? Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we um, direct the assistant town manager to craft some language um, extending the uh, opportunity for yard sales to up to six times annually. Great. I have a second. Is that a second? I yes. Say it out yes. <laughs> I thought you were second. Yeah, she, yeah, she's the chair. I'm the chair. Second. You second. All in favor? Second. All right. So that will get moved to the next. It will get Thank some you. language drafted. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, get there. Get there. Thank get there. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Amendments to the site ordinance about our notification. Mr. Chase, <laughs> please. Good afternoon. Uh, let's see, so I don't know how much of a background you want me to give since we went over this a bit last time, but for quickly for those benefit those in the audience, um, what was requested by the ordinance committee was that staff take a look at our current site plan review ordinance um, and add provisions to uh, require a notification to abutters, which is currently not in the ordinance. And what staff had looked at is other requirements and other provisions of our zoning ordinance as well as a subdivision ordinance and look at sort of what notification requirements were made there. Um, and so as pointed out, we do require notifications for other applications that be come before our planning board, which are subdivision applications and for uh, plan development review processes, which are also spelled out in our zoning ordinance. Um, we also looked at what the Board of Appeals requires. Um, and. Um, so those all require notification. It's actually the Board of Appeals is the only per, um, bit in our ordinance that actually spells out the timing of, of those notifications. That's what we talked about mostly last time, as, as Ms. Bristol brought up earlier. Um, and currently in the zoning ordinance for Board of Appeals applications, it requires 10 days uh, of, um, notification to abutters. As staff, as I mentioned last time, I wanted to have a conversation with my administrative staff to really figure out what we could do in terms of our timing, where our planning board meets every three weeks, and we have a process of determining uh, um, completeness of applications before setting the agenda. And we really did determine that it's actually practice right now that we do 10 days before, and it's 10 days. Um, essentially, it's the Friday, it's 10 days. <laughs> um, I, Hearing that I started to sort of think through and tease through 10 business days, which would essentially be two, two business weeks. Um, and I, in terms of our review of completeness, um, I'm not sure that we could accommodate that given the schedule that our planning board is under right now. So um, I guess, you know, again, where we're starting at a, a point of no notifications, um, recognizing that more notification is always preferred, um, but I do feel that the 10 days is really what the most we could accommodate. Um, sometimes it goes out the Thursday, which makes it 11 days, but uh, you know, to commit to anything in, uh, beyond what our staffing could do, given the current schedule beyond 10 days, I, I don't feel um, we could do that without making some other significant adjustments. That's good. Um, uh, any questions or concerns? Okay, yeah, that was my only question. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. mine too. <laughs> so, I, yeah. yes, go ahead. Can we, is it discussion time? Yeah. yeah. So I, uh, I know uh, we uh, responded to the to the suggestion that was made uh, a meeting or so ago, and you know, thanks Jay for your and your staff checking and coming back. It does seem to me that the ten days, if it's the, if the practice is that we're you know treating them like calendar days, I mm -hmm. would be uncomfortable 
uh, extending it beyond you know the the practice that's in effect even uh, you know so I would you know I would be comfortable <coughs> with it as proposed as revised as 10 days and and in, and apply it the way we've been applying it um, with the other groups and based on the, your research that supported that so I know it's not the same as uh, you know 10 business days, but I, and I don't know what the rule of thumb is legally with legal documents. If it's not stipulated business days, it's typically it's assumed to be calendar right. days. That's right? correct. So, so I'm comfortable going with, with that as proposed. So. Okay. Um, I, I feel comfortable moving this forward to the council. So I'll make a motion that yes. we move it forward to the council. Okay. Second. All in favor? Oh, did we have to vote on it as amended? Or no? First. We didn't amend it. Oh, we didn't. The yellow. That's presented. It oh, is presented. presented. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's what I meant. All right. All right. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. So See this you. will go forward. See you Thank you. All right. Where are we now? Traffic. Traffic. Oh, traffic. We seem to have traffic every meeting. This I always thought would be a great summer intern project to further codify <laughs> it. <laughs> traffic traffic ordinance. ordinances. Marissa. Yes, madam. So this is also, Please. this is another item coming back to you. Um, there was some interest in hearing from our Coastal Water and Harbors Committee about how they felt about the language suggested for parking at the Pine Point Co-op. So we asked to be on their April 9 agenda and they agreed. Um, I was there, uh, Council Hamill was there, as well as our Community Services Director, Todd Souza. Um, I think we had a good conversation, very thorough. They did suggest that they wanted in the, um, the language that mentions an uh, a restriction on non-authorized commercial vehicles and trailers parking within the restricted commercial dirt lot, that's section three of the Pine Point language. They, the, uh -huh. the original language that you saw last month had in the parenthesis following that exception, recreational drop-off, close parentheses. Um, the Coastal Waters and Harbors Committee asked that we add the language and commercial wholesale buyers. There was some concern that oh, right. currently um, commercial wholesale buyers come in and they quickly, you know, they, they come in, they drive in, they meet an, a seller, they buy their, their product and they go off again and that this would prohibit that activity from taking place and they wanted to just make sure that there was an exception um, put in there so that uh, those buyers could still continue to access the dirt lot to purchase fresh catch. Don, does that summarize what you Yeah, I, I, that's a great summary, Larissa, thank you. And I also want to thank you and, um, and Todd Souza uh, for uh, making time in the process for us to uh, take that other step of discussing it uh, with the committee, with the Coastal Harbors Committee. I think it was worthwhile, and I think they are, you know, will be part of the ongoing effort to manage uh, things down there day to day and further clarify as we, you know, proceed to enforce uh, rules that are there and try to manage a fair number of competing demands. So, so thank you for that, and I think it's. Um, in good shape the way it's uh, stated now and uh, it was amended, I think, effectively uh, uh, after, that com after that committee meeting. Thank okay. you. And we also do have the vice chair of that committee here uh, wearing a different hat tonight, but if we had, if you as council members had further questions, um, I'm sure he would be happy <laughs> to answer them. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand. Katie, a uh, question. So, so the commercial wholesale buyers is the piece that was added. And is that aligned, or is it completely separate from the uh, approved agreement know, that we just had, that we just went through? Because that was a, that I don't was a think big point of conversation. I just want to make sure that we didn't just do one thing and now we're, we're saying causing something else. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's in conflict with that. At least that was the discussion at the, you know, at the committee meeting. So um, just knowing how much time and energy yeah. we put into that, yeah. I'm I, until we know that 100%, um, I want to make sure that we're not, if there's no conflict. Um, okay. I think that, and there's nothing yeah, expediently emergency that. about this, right? It's not like this has to happen or move to the council today. There is, there is a little. some time constraints. Yeah. Um, one of the things that the co-op parking lot has some work that needs to get done as far as its repairs and paints and stripings and this language is going to determine where that paint and striping happens. Okay. So there is some interest in having this move forward. Um, my understanding of the part, I think you're referring to the parking lease, is that, yeah. um, and I certainly can kind of get that language back and if there was a way to make a motion 
from this committee to move this to council pending yeah. that so that we are still moving forward but if we find something that conflicts that we would be able to address that at the council level sure. um, I think that that might solve that question but my understanding is that the the parking lease language prohibits commercial buying from taking place in the leased lot area of which the commer the dirt lot is specifically excluded is that yeah. that sounds about right yeah that's what I remember yeah. I just want but there's just been so much information about all of this sure. uh, floating around I just want to make sure so I'm, I'm comfortable with that making a motion and having it depending upon confirmation but just a quick question sorry to interrupt your motion um, so how will we confirm that Larissa then we, we get uh, the I will attorney get, to look at it absolutely and, yeah. I'll okay. send it to Phil and ask him to compare the two and make sure that we're not in conflict yeah and I, I and just input from me I, I would just as soon see him review that too I just want to make sure we don't have any um, you know yeah it's a hot I, topic it is and, and it's gonna get hotter I yeah. want to make sure yeah. we've covered all our bases yeah. so I would agree so Katie you want to make a motion um, yeah no I just wanted to real quick ask another question oh, okay. back, sorry. sorry back to um, section two with the Higgins Beach the vehicles found in the Higgins Beach parking lot outside of the posted operational hours will be subject to ticketing as established. And I can't remember where that piece came from. Um, so this is, both of these pieces came from um, enforcement policy that was put into effect last summer, but was not codified in ordinance. And the concern is that um, sometimes we have people that like to camp overnight in that lot, and we would prefer that that did not happen, but we have no place within the ordinance that allows for enforcement through citation of that behavior. <coughs> Oh, just questions? one other point I'd add. Uh, we didn't mention this, but Angelo Mazzone was there as well, the uh, harbor master, and you know he's going to be—he's going to be on the front line of this thing. So uh, you know, I think he felt comfortable with, with this as far as it went, uh, recognizing that uh, I don't think there's any one person uh, in the town or possibly in the state that could walk you through exactly how everything is going to work. I, I think we're going to—it is going to be for some time a work in progress. So uh, I think we have the outline of it. Um, and so far so good, but there's likely to be more discussion, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And we did ask um, Angelo if, well, I asked, if it would be possible to provide wholesale commercial buyers with t like temporary parking stickers, like to kind of, caught, like to, would that be a different route to go? And he made it very clear that that was of zero interest and <laughs> did not make good sense in any way. Okay. So, so with that, I'll go ahead and move uh, this issue forward to the council pending confirmation of the commercial wholesale buyers that there's no conflict there with the agreement we just passed. Um, I would second that. May I ask for clarification? Sure. If there is co conflict, if Phil says, we'd well, heck no. Have it come back here first. Or, or could we just strike just that language? Would, would you be comfortable if Phil says, nope, this is a conflict, can't go through, would you be comfortable moving forward the rest of the language, Straight making the pr closed parentheses happen after the word drop off? Sure. I would. So uh, and where are we now? That's is this item before, number so three? Three, and you would end it where? Where it had been ended sure, prior. Sure. Recreational be, drop off. So the, essentially, and commercial wholesale buyers would be would be struck. If yeah, so the only thing is I say, is. that was the thing that was added. Yeah. Right. So, so I can't say without getting input from uh, folks that asked that it be added, who were the Coastal Harbor people. All right. Well, we yeah. can take a, a vote on yeah. that. So we, where are we in our motions? <laughs> so uh, let me try to recap. So if the motion, as I understand it, was to uh, move it forward, move it forward, forward pending, pending confirmation that there was no conflict. And then there was a revision suggested that if there was a conflict, we would just drop the... Strike the commercial the, wholesale buyer piece and leave it as it was. Yeah, th and that was the, the primary reason why it was added in the following the Coastal Harbors uh, committee meeting. Well, let's move, vote on the motion on the floor and mm -hmm. then see if we want to amend it. Okay. All those in favor of Katie's motion. <laughs> Which is to move it forward to council pending a
pending yeah. approval from Phil. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. yeah. I've lost my place there, sorry. I mean, that's, right. that's an easy <laughs> fix later. We can... Yeah. Let's see All what happens. happens. All right, Every word matters is what yeah. I've learned. Yes, it does. <laughs> Oh, does that, we well, can, just so that staff has clarity. So I'm yes. going to send this to Phil. Yep. Hopefully, Phil's going to say, not a problem, guys. Great work. Move forward. If Phil does not say that, I am uncomfortable not having you decide exactly the course of action in this public space, because otherwise, I'm going to need to ask <coughs> you to make a decision outside of this public space about whether it's going to council and you'll amend it there or whether it's going to come back here. Yeah, yeah. so my understanding is we'll go to council and we'll amend it there. I would say, evening. yeah, just let it be amended in council is an issue with uh, Phil, then you can present that at that point. So I have a problem with that. The whole reason we suggested in the first place that it go to the Coastal Harbors Committee was so that the, the harvesters, the fishermen, the folks that are going to be working with commercial buyers um, would be able to do that. And there was, and that, that went back to the meeting in which the co-op was approved, the co-op sale was approved, um, but there was a, you know, uh, a, a lot of concern about it. So that's why I suggested in the first place it, it go to, to Coastal Harbors to get their input. Um, so I'm not comfortable some, you know, with the, you know, with the council deciding without some input from the Coastal Harbors Committee. I think that we need input from the folks that are gonna be closest to managing this and they're going to be the harbor master and are you concerned we wouldn't be able to get that input between now and then or uh, I, no because not, if it's it not a timing the council we still have first reading public yeah i haven't reading. given a, a thought to the timing unfortunately i'd rather take the time to get it straight if we feel it's going to be an issue are otherwise you making a motion uh i don't know uh, it's it's <laughs> well, a let's, let's, question let's just talk it through a little bit more yeah. first and then you can if you want to make yeah. a motion you can make a motion but the way to my way of thinking right this is a small piece and i 100 yeah. percent understand where you're coming from and then absolutely no disrespect to that group i think they could still have the opportunity to provide the input that we would need because it wouldn't be a one and done action item correct right that's correct it would be a it would be a first reading right. public hearing second reading right and we would give and them the given option. the timing um, right. concerns that there right. is some because we here's here's the thing we don't meet again for another month yeah I know and they wanted to get the painting going I know so if we don't if we delay we're talking it's not come to the council now yeah. until June, June. So that was my only thinking is that I, we, I, and then we could do a specific reach out to that com committee and make sure I they think, have the input to us that we I need. think we need a formal <coughs> commitment commitment um, to get input from the Coastal Harbors, maybe the it's the chair of the Coastal Harbors Committee, uh, rather than have it go back to the full committee. I will be committed to reaching yeah. out to him personally. Would that yeah. make you feel better? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Can, well, and may I suggest that, so that committee meets on Tuesday, May 7th, will be their next meeting. So I will have this information from Phil by the end of next week. Yeah. I can then, if it does not go as we are all hoping it goes, yeah. I can again reach out to um, Travis and ask yeah. to be on the agenda for May yeah. 7th because yeah. that's always a good time. Yeah. And that would, so this would still go before council on, we could wait till May 15, I guess, to have, or we could have first reading at May 1. That's your first council meeting. Yeah. We could get feedback from Coastal Waters on May 7th, yeah. and it would have its public yeah. hearing second reading on May yeah. 15th. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? That'll yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to work the issue and not uh, yep. uh, impede progress too, right. too much. Exactly. Right. Toadie seems to feel that I might be wrong in my scheduling. No, I was just thinking it's the first Tuesday of the month. I mean, the oh, it's not the first Tuesday, it's the second Tuesday? Right. It's not until the 14th? Correct. So it would be the night before our public hearing. Okay. We have it on May 1st. I have a feeling that this is a non-issue. So if it, if it is a non-issue, we all be happy. If it's not, <laughs> they'll still have a chance they'll to... They'll still have a chance. Yeah. yeah. And okay. we could invite them to come and speak on May 1 even. <laughs> okay. So, everyone feel good about that? I do. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Got a plan. Okay. Sounds good. I used to be an optimist, you know, so... I'm, no, <laughs> I'm holding on tight. <laughs> oh, let's see. We've got a few people here from Conservation Commission. Want to talk to us about plastic bags, please? Oh, screen? Oh, they want the screen. Oh, they, 
Oh, well, I just want to know where the tap shoes are because I did tell you you should do a dance. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I said come up with a cool wrap right. for plastic bags. Soft shoe then. There, yeah, we can soft shoe. A little break dance maybe. Yeah, I can do that. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh oh. But we also don't have signal on the other screen. How about saying there's no source? I think it's going to, is there not a, do you not have a plug for the larger plug that I? I do not have a. Oh, we just have to push it in a little bit harder. Hopefully it's coming up. Technology is great when it works. Look at that. Here we go. It's like we knew what we were doing. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Pete Slavinsky, 3 Ironclad Road. I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission. And um, just wanted to take a couple minutes, I know we have a tight schedule tonight, just to share with you uh, and put in the record um, our draft, the, some of the background information we've pulled together relating to a draft plastic bag ordinance for the town of Scarborough. We really feel that this is a really important issue, um, especially us being a coastal community with the largest marsh in the state of Maine. Uh, and plastic, single-use plastic bags are one of the most commonly found things during cleanups, aside from cigarette butts, but cigarette butts at least break down. Single-use plastic bags don't. Um, they're very difficult to recycle. Uh, and I just wanted to walk through with you some of the things we've done um, over a year-long process uh, as a commission working with our sus two sustainability coordinators now um, on this issue and bringing this language forward to you. Um, so, I mean, you've probably reviewed this material. Um, they're, they're intended to be used only once. They're not biodegradable. They're, they cannot be recycled curbside. And, and the, that's one of the problems that we're actually seeing. Uh, in terms of plastic bags ending up in, in recycling facilities and, and higher administrative costs to the town. Um, Eco Maine says that plastic bags are one of those common things that they're finding that is non-recyclable. And of course, it's also not good for our environment, single-use plastic bags. They're deadly, deadly things for the environment. Um, so we're not alone in thinking about this issue. Uh, in fact, some communities have actually already <coughs> passed either a fee or an all-out ban on plastic bags. Um, in fact, Biddeford uh, is, should be on this list of a community with ban that was just adopted by their city council just recently. Um, and the reason that the, what, Scarborough is, what, what the Scarborough Conservation Commission is trying to push forward here with our draft ordinance is an actual ban. We originally came up with the concept of a fee. But after doing some more research um, and talking with some neighboring communities, um, we're finding that the fee doesn't necessarily achieve the goal of really significantly reducing plastic bags in the environment. Um, Falmouth had a fee passed, and they were still the following year handing out 1.5 million plastic bags from a single or from the stored retail stores um, that they're keeping track of. So that's still a lot of plastic going in the environment. Um, so another reason that we're looking at a ban versus a fee is that fees actually require a lot of administrative effort from both the town and <coughs> retailers in doing so. Um, and it's also difficult to enforce. And a lot of the communities that have passed bans with fees or bag fees are now looking potentially to look at ban language. Uh, and I kind of jumped ahead of myself here. Uh, but one of the things that we're trying to do to accommodate um, retailers within the community is actually have a one-year grace period mm -hmm. for this to go into effect so that this is not an, uh, just suddenly, boom, just put in a language and then it goes into effect. But we're really hoping that that would give uh, retailers a, a period of time to adapt to what the community is trying to do. And there, of course, would be exemptions for uh, different types of you, you, for your produce bag, for meats, seafood, uh, and dry cleaning and things like that. And we've had some initial conversations. Jamie reached out to SEDCO, and there's been some positive response from them in terms of this. Um, so that, of course, would probably have to happen a little bit more as, as language was finalized, um, but we're certainly willing to engage with anybody and everyone on the issue. Um, and we've also actually, uh, at the last election, um, we had a, a poll, just an informal poll, where we, where we spoke with about, I think it was about 500 people, and um, 
there was about between a five and six to one margin where folks were in favor of actually either a ban or a fee as it, as it relates to plastic bags uh, in Scarborough. So uh, we hope the language that we've pulled together um, would uh, help the committee in working through this process. And we, of course, are here to answer any questions. And if I can't answer them, I have great support staff and, and also a lot of commission members who would be helpful as well. So thank you. Yeah, I want to thank um, the Conservation Commission because I know when this originally came before me, my knee-jerk reaction was, are, they, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> and these guys know me because I used to be on the Conservation Commission. <laughs> um, just politically is, you know, will we get support for ban and whatever? And I have to tell, let the public know that the Conservation Commission did go out, did outreach with the public, um, have talked to a number of uh, different organizations in the community. As part of our packet, we have some letters from some other groups. Um, I know that I talked to the ECOS, I think that's what they call it at the high school. I suggested that they meet with you guys also. So, And there is a snowballing uh, effect going on now. In fact, the legislature, I'm not sure where it is at this point, I forgot to check. Um, has a bag, I believe it's ban, mm -hmm. um, in the legislature too that should go through. I personally like the idea that you've got a phase in period, so it's not like boom, you guys got to do it now. But anyway, I'm going to allow my fellow people to speak. Questions, concerns? Um, well, so I am the liaison, the current liaison to the Conservation Commission, a very fun and lively group, I will say. <laughs> One of my favorite meetings of the month. Um, and, you know, initially they asked me to outreach and, and talk to all the counselors, kind of see if we could gauge where we were when they were talking about doing a fee. And there was certainly um, a fair amount of support for that. My biggest concern was going, as you said, yeah. zero to ten. Um, and, but I will tell you, I, I have, you know, the, the work that's been done, the outreach, the very thoughtful and methodical, it's not like just trying to slam this down, has been uh, incredible work and it's been really nice to be a part of that and watching the progression. Um, so I feel very comfortable, especially given the phase in period, um, that this is the right direction for us to go in. And, and I wouldn't have said that probably six months ago. Six months ago, I was a, a lot more weary of uh, whether we should pursue it um, full on or not. But the, the data that's been provided, Jamie's done an incredible job um, as well. So uh, thank you for all that hard work. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we need a little time with the language would yes. be my thing. Right. Um, that this group will yep. want to work through that a little bit more before sending it yep. straight out to the council and perhaps waiting until after the budget season might be uh, more opportune. <laughs> uh, and Great strate suggestion. And, and strategic. <laughs> um, so uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Tom? Yeah, I uh, uh, want to also thank uh, uh, Peter and uh, and uh, the group for uh, developing such broad-based and thorough support for this. You give it a lot of thought. Um, we had a great conversation leading up to the meeting, read through all the materials. So, you know, uh, good plan, and you've, you've drawn very carefully from other, the experience of other communities. So I think good job on that. So, And with the waiting period, I, I think this is uh, eminently reasonable and long overdue. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So I... Do we need a motion to move it to the next meeting? Yes, okay. so we can work on language. So we can work on language yeah. and any tweaks, but at this point, so, so, yeah. That's your motion? Oh, yeah, was that really, <laughs> it was eloquent, wasn't it? Uh, I move that we uh, send the, the submitted um, draft language to our next meeting for further um, revision and okay. discussion. Second. All in favor? There we go. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. All right, now I just lost my, uh, my pile of papers there. Food trucks. Food trucks. Uh, Marissa. <laughs> um, actually, Tony, are you here to speak to or food is trucks? Is Tony here for food trucks? You're just listening, okay. Okay. Um, just wanted to check. There we go. But Tony, will you correct me if I in any way steer oh. this con? Okay. <laughs> um, so this was brought to me. Uh, uh, and therefore to you, uh, through our town clerk, um, she has been receiving some phone calls from food truck owners looking for opportunities to be here in Scarborough, and currently we do not have a licensing process that would allow that. 
Um, at the same time, SEDCO has had some uh, people that are interested, that are bricks and mortar spaces here in town, that are interested in expanding through a food truck sort of model. So it turns out that the food truck conversation did come before long range planning a couple of years ago. And in your packet you have, these were provided to us from SEDCO. Um, kind of a quick synopsis of the different ways that we could deal with food trucks, the zoning approach, um, the designated area in town approach, and the mobile units as caterers, which is currently how we treat food trucks in town, um, as well as the memo that went to the Long Range Planning Committee in June of 2015. So you can kind of see where the conversation had been. And then also attached in your packet is the City of Portland's food trucks rules and reg regulations as kind of an example of what that language could look like. Um, and the language, and this also came from SEDCO as a suggested place to start the conversation. But I guess before we start looking at actual ordinance language, the first question maybe to be discussed is, is there interest from this committee in having this conversation? And I will move that to Don and Katie. Katie, you want to go first? I, I think it's an important discussion to have. I mean, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to look around and see that this type of business um, and economic opportunity is abundant. Um, it raises a lot of questions, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I speaking of, which don't we already have like a food truck that comes to the concerts in the park all summer long? No, I believe I just could have swore at one of the concerts last summer there was a truck. There was food a food truck. truck for a Project Grace. So it was like a one-time event, yes. like a special. It was a catering. Or under this catering okay, thing. maybe that's, that's what we're, we're maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. Um, so no, I think it's a worthwhile discussion. I think it's not as simple uh, as most things aren't on the surface, <laughs> right? They, um, so I'm happy to move it forward for discussion. That's not a formal motion. I mean, for us to to, yeah. to put it out it for more for more investigation and whatever. Don, what's your? Yeah, I uh, I'm a fan of food trucks, so <laughs> I you know I'm a fan of food, so I. Uh, and we're evolving as a community. I mean, one thing that stuck in my mind when I read about food trucks is that, uh, I know, uh, I mean, normally people associate them with urban centers, right? You know, they uh, out of necessity have had these around for a while. You know, we're a different case you know, rural, suburban, becoming more suburban. Uh, but I was thinking about things that are in motion, uh, the innovation district uh, in the downs. I've been watching some of the planning board discussions on that, and it's clear there's gonna be a need for people to, unless everybody's gonna brown bag it, there's gonna be a need for people to, to, to go to lunch someplace or at least have trucks show up. So I, you know, uh, I, I'm absolutely in favor of having a conversation and, and I hope that, uh, uh, there's some good examples about how to do it, different approaches, and uh, I think as long as we're balancing the presence of them with other concerns, privacy concerns and noise and that sort of thing, um, and I think we have a pretty good track record doing that. So I'm, I'm open to have the dialogue, and uh, we'll try to be careful to disclose my uh, food obsession when we talk <laughs> about it. So, Mr. Don't Chase, ask for Mr. Chase, <laughs> would you like to add to this conversation? Uh, sure, I just wanted to, I, I think, you know, I'm clear to hearing that there's interest in the conversation, which I think is great. And as we've all have seen, there's interest in this type of thing um, in a number of different places. And, and I, um, I think there are sort of a lot of different implications to really think about. And I, and I know as uh, Ms. Martin's letter sort of indicated from four years ago, there was a conversation started at the Long Range Planning Committee really sort of thinking about some of those land use implications. And I wasn't the director at the time, so I wasn't uh, intimately involved and I don't really remember why that conversation sort of petered out, if you will. And so the only um, thing I might put forward to, to uh, the ordinance committee is, are you interested in having the Long Range Planning Committee provide some of their insight as you think about these issues? Um, and the other thing I had also thought about is, um, I had a conversation uh, not too long ago with Ms. Martin about really thinking about also having a conversation with potential providers. Where, where is it they're interested in being in the community? Because um, I don't think we need to write an ordinance that sort of says, hey, we should let them he here where they maybe want to be over there. And so I, I think there, there is, as you, 
you all just sort of went through a, a, sort of a, an in-depth conversation here to occur. And certainly if you want to have that conversation, I'm pleased to leave that with the Ordinance Committee, but I would offer that uh, the Land Use, uh, sorry, Long, Plan Long Range Planning Committee, um, I would offer their, uh, their efforts if you're interested. So Jay, um, just for my own edification, mm. I vaguely remember this in Long Range yeah. Planning back uh, in the day. Um, so your suggestion is that we send this to Long Range Planning, should we do it in a parallel line or send it to Long Range Planning and then have them come back to ordinance? I mean, what do you think would be I, the best way to do this? I might think that might be the better approach to have right. it and, and where at least two, uh, the two of the members currently on, the, on, the, uh, on this committee serve as liaisons right. to that committee. I think it could allow for that more in-depth and sort of sausage making, so to speak, to occur um, before it sort of rises to, to council level and you, know, you as the subcommittee of council. Uh, Jean Marie? Yeah. Um, one of the, Karen Martin did ask very, um, really supporting what Jay had said that the Long Range Planning Committee be used from a land use perspective, mm -hmm. right. but I think that there is space for this to go parallel from a licensing Licensing's perspective. Mm -hmm. So okay. the Ordinance Committee could be talking about licensing concerns while right. the Land Use, the Long Range Planning Committee was talking mm -hmm. about it from a land use process. Yeah. Right. Um, if so, if yeah. that is, if that's an option yeah. that you are comfortable with, I would suggest that we think about that. Katie, yeah, and uh, along those lines, what I was thinking of is just similar to, to yard sales. <coughs> most of this business, a lot of this business, is seasonal. Yes, um, to oh, yeah. some degree. So I think having them on parallel tracks and getting more information, I think, makes the most sense to me. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Okay. Are we Great. Up? So for direction to staff for next, um, next session from a, so Jay will connect with the Long Range Planning Committee, yes. see if, if they're interested in getting this on their agenda sooner rather than later. Yes. Um, from your committee standpoint and for your moving forward for staff, um, may I have direction or, or, or permission to work with Todi to kind of find out exactly what licensing concerns yes. we have yeah. and, yes. and come back to you with Please. things next time? Yeah. That'd be great. I so yeah. move we give Larissa permission. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Okay. Second. All in favor? Okay. There we go. No one wants to talk about marijuana. Last but not least. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Commercial marijuana ordinance development. This is the one I'm talking about. It's the hot, like the hot tea. We got to put the sauce on and make sure we're doing it all right. And because um, it is, it's it's so new. Uh, and you've got the state spent all upside down and inside out as to what they're doing. So as a, as municipalities, I still feel like we're kind of a little bit grasping at mm. straws. It's not, you know, because we're looking to see what other towns mm. do and whatnot. I personally believe in going slower mm. rather than fast, just because it is such a large undertaking, um, potentially. So mm. I want to turn this. Larissa, you're the star of the day. Here. So exciting. Uh, so my apologies, first and foremost, for not um, following the excellent example of uh, my peer, Jay Chase, in providing you a thorough memo prior to the pa packet materials you have regarding marijuana. The direction I understood from, count from this committee last month was to come back with some example language from other communities about what they had done. So that is, that is what you have in front of you. But I did take the opportunity to show you what it would look like as a Scarborough ordinance. So my, my apologies for not having a memo that prefaced that. Um, Jay's just showing up. Well, Jay's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, and he's in planning, so he's better at making a plan and, and having it happen. So um, what you have in front of you in your packet that was able to go out to you by Friday is language out of South Portland that has been adapted to reflect this committee's um, unanimous disinterest in adult use retail stores. Mm -hmm. So um, the references to adult use retail stores have been removed because last month at this committee's meeting, there was a unanimous vote that there was zero interest in seeing any language regarding those. Um, but the rest of the language is out of South Portland, where it's from has been changed from city to town, um, and some other small changes have been made that just simply did not um, apply to us here in the town of Scarborough. 
since the agenda packet was sent out to you, I was I did hear back from some of the other people that I had reached out to. So, Sanford's language is was Correct. waiting for you at your seats. Um, Sanford actually has opted out, or rather, ever, has not opted in, because if you'll remember, the hmm. state has said, this is not a, a legal commercial activity unless your town chooses to opt in, right. okay? Um, Sanford is only opting into the medical side on all fronts. They are okay. not opting into the um, adult use, uh, um, uh, no, uh, um, cultivation maybe, but they're not opting into adult use, um, Manufacture or adult use testing okay. and adult use retail stores. So okay. you will hmm. see in the language um, they actually clearly prohibit it. So, so I they went down the line on no on adult right. use. They're just keeping okay. it all medical. Right, they're keeping okay. it all medical. Can I make one yeah. question or comment or clarifying statement around that? So for me, and I'm not speaking for my okay. peers, obviously, um, I, I just want to be clear to the community that from uh, what I recall the conversation being driven around was that it was it's easy easier, not that it is easy, easier to tackle the medical piece first. I don't know that anyone is saying never ever would we touch that right. other piece. It's just that we've got to start somewhere. It is, you know, so that was the easier piece to tackle from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Is that a fair That's kind of That's part of it, yeah. picture? Um, and I can fully, because some of the comments earlier, I fully appreciate and can understand and uh, fully get the, the desire to want to make sure that we're playing on a level playing field and that we're handling all things, um, you know, equally. But I think this is a big thing and it's new and it's, you know, new things change tends to scare people. And in this particular case, I'm, I'm with Councilor Cantorina and that going slowly through this and we're going to learn a lot from going through the medical side of things first. and. You know, and I think the only one we, we're deciding to not address immediately, right, is the retail. Adult. Adult, use, adult retail. Right? Yeah, but, but not cultivation, uh, just the, re just right, the retail. Right, that's store. right. So we actually, we're probably either in the middle or far further right. along than some of the other communities as we stand today, depending on where we go. And, uh, and I know that was a question from, I believe it was Mr. Burke, uh, who had also in his letter you know, well, why aren't we doing that? And I just wanted to add to that the part of it was because of the referendum result in Scarborough in 2016. And it's not that we may are probably or might not eventually get there, but we chose not to pursue that at the moment. We'd rather get these other pieces in place now uh, and, and work with that because uh, we do have people who are already in, in the business and they're waiting to find out well, what can we do now. And next, do you, Ms. Burke, do you yeah, want to address I, I, No, I, just real quickly. Sure, yeah. real quickly. I won't take the rest of the time. So the referendum in 2016 uh, is substantially different than the current law that exists today. I listened to, and it was involved in, in discussions on the modifications, what happened in Augusta. And so I think if the same vote was presented today to voters in the main with what's current, I think there would be a much greater support uh, among Maine residents uh, with the current law that stands. Um, I, I did have a question, though, specifically related to adult use. Was there a specific reason the committee had as to not wanting to address it now? Mm -hmm. And if, if so, I'd love, love to just, I just, just for my own notes, to have a better understanding. Um, and again, it's the perception that the community at this point is not quite ready for that. Okay. The adult use, and if people want adult use, they can go to South Fork or they can go to Saw Hill. Yeah. And that was where we were thinking, to be honest. I mean, that's no. the point. And I, and I think that's fair. And, and obviously, uh, you guys, this, I know this is a complicated issue. Uh, currently, what's going on at the state at the moment, from my understanding, I just actually got an email from the main bar about this. Uh, so. There was an article at Press Herald that said that the substantive rules have been submitted now to the various different agencies in Augusta. That process is going to be done confidentially until those rules are presented to the legislature, which will then be made public. Uh, they're anticipating a vote before the end of June on those rules. And according to recent email that I received, they're anticipating, though I think this is a, a speculative, they're anticipating the actual licensing to be available as early as midsummer, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a quick turnaround. I think that's probably a little advantageous. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think that Augusta is moving at light speed right now to get this uh, moving forward. Uh, 
but the um, I appreciate you you know answering that, and I'm not trying to question the committee's intent or why it's doing that. I guess my point is that if you are, there are certainly communities that are going to opt in and not opt in, but there are residents in this town that do consume cannabis in some form or fashion, and I think that while I don't have no idea what the majority is or the numbers are, but Forcing them to go to another community just because some people in the community may or may not like it, I, I kind of take issue that as a resident. Um, but that being said, I also would add, and I said in my letter, you know, we have different, we, you know, we have alcohol stores surrounding the high school. We have restaurants that serve alcohol surrounding it. Tobacco, we have stores that sell vaping devices, which if we're all been following is probably even more of an epidemic than the cannabis issues. So. Um, I, it's kind of where my head's at, at least in that aspect, as a resident. I'm not speaking on behalf of myself as a consultant. I'd like an opportunity to address that. Sure. Please. Just so, for me, my thinking's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was one of the reasons that we discussed and why we came to the decision we came to. But in addition to that, I would add, um, you know, that, again, we're dealing with a, with a, a large piece here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want... Um, that I think that's going to be the, the biggest hurdle and the, the one thing that would hold up us moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to hold up the medical, all the other pieces that we are going to start working on, I didn't want to hold those up because of that one piece. And I think we're going to learn a lot again in that process of moving forward with the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps that's something that gets addressed again as quickly as, you know, the next council season. Um, I don't know for sure whether it would or not. I can't. I won't be here. Um, but what I can say with confidence is that I think I, I feel very comfortable with where we landed, and I think we we don't want to stall that process any further. We want to get we want to get moving on this. Is that yes, fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, uh, if I might build on uh, the you know the question and then Katie's response, so. Uh, and we seem to go back and forth on this. So the state legalized uh, adult use totally. and possession uh, and then said, Towns, you go figure it out. Okay. Basically. Uh, okay. That's right. <laughs> so now whether that's leading no or proceeds. following, I don't, yeah. And, and they give us no, no licensing fees, yeah. no, yeah, no share of the money <laughs> from that. So no revenues. So, and I, uh, I, new to kind of reading the tea leaves about what's happening and what's not happening at Augusta. So assuming they're either going to be leading or following, I don't really know. I think it depends upon the issue and, and everything else they're wrestling with. So, so so there's that. There's also the fact that we we are, I am personally trying to get educated uh, mm -hmm. to make an informed um, decision and recommendation on behalf of the, of the community, you know, of, of our community, the whole community. And, and I, I think so far we've had a lot of uh, input and interest for good reason from the folks that are in the business already. Right. You know, they have invested money and they are wondering what's going to happen. So I'm, uh, I am sympathetic to that. Um, so, but at the same time, it's like, so we go from, we want to hear more to boom, here's a draft <laughs> ordinance. And so, um, you know, my apologies if you're reading that as a, we're putting this forward. Now we're, we're, we're doing this for the purposes of educating first the, the committee and so that we can then begin to kind of wade through this with the public and they lag, you know, they'll, they'll catch up fast and when they do, we'll all know about it. Um, but so far, uh, you know, the folks that are, you know, leading the dialogue are the ones that are most invested literally uh, in the debate so far. So I'd say, you know, we're, uh, uh, when you have money invested and you're trying to figure out what your revenues are going to be and how to expand and so forth, these are real life here and now, yesterday kinds of issues. At the same time, we have a we have a diverse community, mm -hmm. and we uh, with a broad diversity of opinion uh, on each one of these elements. So I just say, you know, press on. Uh, we're learning, um, but I can't predict the timing, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we're going to have some stops and starts along the way. So I know our timing, and I know we should work with that, but. Um, that with, with being reasonable to adapt as we need to. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Burt. Thank you. So to kind of, um, so you have Stanford's yep. language, um, and I just found it on the back page of Article One that they actually have 
uh, they are not opting into any form of adult use, including right. cultivation. Huh. They're just, they're out. They also um, have some very interesting language. They've gone with an overlay zone, yes. but their overlay zone is only eight maps and lots. Oh, interesting. Which um, really, I'm curious to speak to s their city manager or their right. city planner to see about how that, um, I think that that can be challenging from a kind of a spot zoning sort of yes. standpoint. So I am curious to see how that works out, and the comments at the public hearings made that made it clear that there were some residents that were quite um, disturbed by that choice. Sure. But they only are allowing the medical activity to take place on eight maps and lots in the city of in the city of Stanford. Um, <coughs> then you also have um, Poland, just yep. from the other end. So you know, South Portland and Sanford are large communities, urban centers, and then Poland is a much more um, modest yeah. town. Um, so you have some examples. Um, they have, they're almost identical, their adult use to their um, medical use, but I just wanted you to be able to see those as well. Mm -hmm. And so these are just three examples from three different communities about how those communities have decided to address this. Um, I thought <coughs> it was important to include the licensing piece for you guys to start yeah. thinking about, about what does that licensing process look like? Um, as the performance standards that are included as a, an example of what performance standards could look like, I also that's the item 10A, I also thought might be helpful in framing a conversation about things like distances between, um, right. between uh, storefronts, distances between sensitive uses, um, and of there, one of the things that we heard both at the public meetings as well as at, in our conversation last month was real concern about odor management and the performance standards is where we would house language about re what requirements we would have. And this gives you an example of about what um, South Portland has embraced from that for those. And then in the Sanford language, there's also very clear directive about how they wish for odor to be managed. The, they call for an odor control plan. This is in your article two from Sanford on page nine. Um, and they have a very, very clear outline of how odor control plans shall be formed and submitted and, and what they'll need to um, provide for. So that's what I've got for you. Uh, obviously, we, we're going to need some time to digest um, this, at least in my opinion, what we received today um, from Sanford and um, Poland, uh, what, what they're doing. Uh, I know I had a few questions or thoughts on what you gave us for today. Sure. And if my fellow uh, members would be divulge okay with me, divulge. absolutely. Oh. Yeah. So a bulge, you meant a bulge. A bulge. Yeah, yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> it's a long day. Um, I just had a few. Hold on a minute. Let me go back here. This is why I printed everything out. On page six, and this is just, and, and just for, so the public will know, this is just more information that I'm requesting from the assistant town manager to see if she can get some more information, for me anyway, is under local license, uh, local license issued, blah, blah, blah. Marijuana testing facility does not require a local license, and I just had a little notation there, why not? So I would have to speak to South Portland to find out why, but my sense is, is that it really is a biotech activity. Um, it's not, it's, with manufacturing, the ordinance language from, the, the, from different towns really is focused on some of the dangerous um, processes and chemicals that are used right. to extract. Um, and that's why licensing, it has a higher threshold to get into that business. Mm -hmm. Whereas those testing facilities, they're not growing marijuana products, they're not making manu marijuana products, they're simply um, receiving marijuana and marijuana products and they're testing it for contaminants and for THC levels and um, they, <coughs> last year I actually spoke to one of the largest testing companies, um, one of the branches out in California. They have incinerators on site that, you know, incinerate the product after they've right. tested it. They're just, they're, many of the concerns that some people may have concerning commercial marijuana activities simply are not present in the testing. It, it would be no different than any of our other biotech hub okay. um, facilities that we welcome here in town, and I think that that's what makes them exempt from a licensing mm -hmm. process. And then on page eight, under um, and, and this Mr. Burke's letter actually 
got me wondering and asking about something. I have not yet seen his letter, so oh, okay. I can't I'm speak sorry. to that. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy. I'm sorry, I thought you had been harping okay. on that. Um, is... Yeah, why, again, under number five, if not included in state license, release will authorize maybe a minute with application and for each officer, owner, member, manager, or partner of the applicant. That did seem a little broad. And then number nine, applicant security plan operations manual. I, I mean, is there a re I mean, I'd like to know more about why we would require a secure, what they do for security filed with us, because that's potentially uh, public information. And mm -hmm. do we need to go that far? Sure. And then the background checks also, every officer, director, manager, general partner. I don't know if some of this is in state law or if this is something South Portland's doing and why. <laughs> what they came up, why they came up with all of that. Because there are, I know I've, I've owned some small businesses and I don't have a requirement to make it publicly known who the shareholders are or whatever. And so that's why I'm, okay. I'm like, where's that in? Hold on, hold on a second. Um, bear with me. Okay, uh, under item 10A, under performance standards, and this is this is just Jean Marie. There may be. What do you mean by mature versus immature? Uh, I don't see def. You know, I want to see definitions of sure. some of these. It's like, so what's that mean? I think that if, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that state language defines right. immature. Okay, immature. but I would, if we did something, yep. I want to see definitions, yep. specific sure. definitions in anything, because otherwise it's, what, what are you going by? Mm -hmm. um, page. Oh, we had this conversation before, and page two. Under 10A, C, again, what the heck's a plant canopy? Well, and no one seems to have a definition of that. Maybe they should come up with one. We spoke to, <laughs> and that? Phil spoke to that. I at, know, and he yep, said there's the no state has definition. Not yet. Yeah. So I think what I understood from Phil is that we can, we can define that a little bit for ourselves. Okay, and so, right. again, this is a, a framework for us to be thinking when you do have a chance to look at Poland and um, Sanford, you'll see right. that they address canopy differently. Right. And they actually break their cultivation licensing down into different tiers based on canopy. Yep. So there, there's a lot of places here for us to, to discuss and right. for us to go. And I think that the thing to really remember is that because this is an opt-in sort of scenario, the state has given municipalities huge leeway in right. making decisions. I mean, we're, we are right. certainly, um, if we do decide to allow for commercial marijuana activity, we are confined, not confined, it's the wrong word, we must stay within the parameters of like licensing fees. It would, we yeah. cannot um, decide that it's a $20,000 licensing fee, right? right. The, the state does have some, some right. language about some limits, reasonable so. licensing fees. Right. So with it, where the state language applies, we would need to follow that. But they have, by saying this is an opt-in opportunity, right. you have really a lot of leeway to decide what's, right. what you feel is the right fit for this community in all of these areas. Yeah. And then the last one is on page three um, under Number under the odor management, I, I mean, I agree that must not be detected off-site. That's rather broad. That's really broad. And I know odor is a pain in the you-know-what, trying to define. And who decides something that smells good to one person, smells horrible to something someone else. And so, and again, read, I haven't had a chance to look at what Sanford and Poland are doing, but I, I can't imagine that somewhere out there someone doesn't have something. So that's just the type of things, personally, I would like to see more refined mm -hmm. before we move on. And I forget, there's a copy. I'm sorry, yeah, Judy. Copy. Copy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got it in my email, but I don't you know what I printed out. So anyway, that's, anyone else have any thoughts, having looked at? I, I think you covered, you did a good job of covering, uh, you know, a wide range of questions uh, that I had as well. Uh, there was one point I, th I thought that John had brought up in his letter, though, uh, which questioned the role of public safety and approval for licensing. So I, and I don't, uh, I can't pull up your letter very quickly here, but could you, could you take a minute to explain to us what you had in mind around that? Because I was looking at the grid 
that we had at the front of the proposed ordinance language for Scarborough, and they are in quite a few of those boxes. Absolutely. So it'd be helpful for me to. Yeah, please, if you would. Thanks. People Thank here. you. So actually, I was in my letter, I was actually questioning what role law enforcement would have in oh, yeah. the approval process. I would be advocating that there would be law enforcement should not have a role because it's not really their function. Um, you know, it, at the state level, just to kind of go how it's all going to work, at least in theory, is that the Department of uh, Administrative Financial Services, DAFs, runs this whole show. They're going to have a whole list of enforcement officers that are going to deal with state compliance issues. If an issue arises where there could be criminal action, they're going to bring in law enforcement, okay. probably the main DEA. At a local level, though, I understand the need to have code enforcement in there, even health and safety inspectors, um, and, and fire. The list, that box, I think, is an example from the South Portland ordinance. And even in there, there's some, it's unclear why they're in there. I, I did see some language where there was um, a requirement to inform the police chief or a representative of the chief uh, a name of someone that works at the facility that could be on call in the event that, let's say, a, a burglary was occurring or a break-in or what have yeah. you. But um, at least in my letter, I would be advocating that I don't see the need to have law enforcement involved in this particular I see. Because when I read it, I thought it had, uh, in addition to the points you made, I thought perhaps it had to do with things like them surveying, they're uh, reviewing surveillance cameras and the lock boxes and things like yeah. that, that, you know, that would, you know, seem like they would be uh, things that you'd want the police or fire folks to look at. Well, I mean, I don't know who would be the right party. I think code enforcement probably that maybe. But as far as the security complaint is concerned, the state does have obligation. There, there is going to be a requirement. In fact, the substantive rulemaking they're doing now is likely going to have a relatively detailed list of this. Yeah. What I've seen being proposed, in, what I've seen in South Portland and other communities, they're all relatively the same. Um, but my point about security plans being disclosed, as the committee has brought up, is my fear is that it gets in the public domain, and I can tell you that some businesses have security that even their employees don't know about, and there's a reason for that. Right. So uh, I think that trying to find a, a balance of maybe the community wanting to be able to at least see that a plan's in place, but not having it in the public domain would I be. See. So. Thank you. Thank you. Allison, you had a question, yeah, or yeah, if I you would go up. Ask for could, you, could you go oh, up? Oh, yes, absolutely. So people can I'm sorry. I <coughs> That's okay. I, I was just looking for a clarification on okay. what was posted in term, you know, for ordinance language. If it's actually a proposed draft, it's just an example from other communities. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And again, my apologies for not providing a memo prefacing no, no, the, the language to make that clear. No, you had nothing else to do. Well, <laughs> would have alleviated some stress prior to the meeting. <laughs> We have a reason to read it now. You know, we got like <laughs> a little Katie, did you? No, I think most of my questions or pieces have been covered thus far. I think um, I need some time yeah. to absorb and contrast, compare, um, and dig deeper. We have a motion then to move this I forward. I think Don should practice his motion. Yeah, go ahead. You can make a motion this time. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I would recommend that we uh, need more time to review the materials that have been provided from uh, various corners and uh, suggest we bring this up again um, uh, with more Q&A at the, at the next uh, ordinance committee meeting. And that's in the form of a motion? That is a motion, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I will second that and add that I, I think it would be good for the communications committee to help with some outreach as well, yes. see if we yes. can get some more public uh, input Great. as well yep. as amended thank you all in all in favor all right. may, may I just yes to clarify my role yes in the next month um, I have written down some of the questions that I, I heard from you um, if if you have as you're reading through if you have specific questions if you could submit those to me yes. by email, I can get those answers for you prior to the next meeting if that would make things more efficient when we're having that next meeting. Um, 
So I think I understood that we wanted to know what the purpose of the background checks were for the extended list of people that was was put forward by South Portland. Um, questions about the security plan, why that was included. I heard that you would like to see definitions of mature and immature plants. Um, and that you felt that odor, the odor management plan's language referring to just off-site was a bit too broad. Mm -hmm. the, the person who really is responsible for this language in South Portland happens to also be a Scarborough resident. Oh, so, okay. um, so I will reach, his name is Josh Rennie, he's the assistant city manager oh, for the Great. city of Josh. South Portland. Okay. So I will reach out to Josh and see if mm -hmm. he has time to meet with me to kind of walk through how their process, I know that their process has been extensive. Yes. Um, part of what I liked about using their language as a launch point was that A, they're one of our neighbors, so that I think that that is sometimes, there's some, some um, comfort. It also is one of the, um, if, in my opinion, I think it is one of the most permissive ordinances that has been put forward and has it been adopted. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good place to start. If there are places you're uncomfortable with, it's easier to kind of pull those back mm -hmm. than starting with a highly restrictive ordinance that would be maybe harder to see where those, it would be easier to be less restrictive. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've also provided examples of, you know, opting out, right, not opting in. Uh, well, uh, well, well, there's, I provided Sanford, which has yeah. said no thank you to adult use. Um, so I just, I will ask if Josh has time to meet with us, to, to meet with me, kind of get a sense of his process. I will write you a very nice memo for next time summarizing that conversation. Um, but then if you do have other questions, I will include in your packet next time the questions that are sent and the answers to those questions so that you have them to review prior to the meeting. Does that work well for you? Yes. yes. Okay. It does. Did you have something? Yes. Uh -oh. I have a conflict in May. Well, that's too bad. Oh. <laughs> and I think I may, too, oh, in May. We you just slide no, a day or something. Hold on. Can... Notice how we've gone back to paper planners. I you? never left. I, <laughs> I use my electronic, but I like my paper. It's all about scheduling. It really is. Uh, I haven't gotten that far in this one. So don't, we don't have to solve it today. No, but, no, I, no, but the no. issue is space. Getting yeah. space. Yeah. But we'll talk about it. We will meet in May. So stay tuned. Well, yeah. can we talk a little bit about it so I can know yeah, where to, when to start yeah. looking for space? Um, um, so I'm, I have a commitment every single Thursday in May. Okay. And it's it's 8.30 to 5. Okay. <laughs> so Thursdays are completely out. Um, I could do 5. You know, that's, I can do 5. So it could just be a, an hour switch what, if that what, works. Dawn, what are you? This is on the 16th? Uh, May 16th. Yeah, the only thing is 7 p.m. we have a... Uh, Board of Ed second reading. Oh, that's right. That night. Well, good. Then you don't have to leave. We're all warmed up. Yeah. Would it yeah. make it be a half day here? So. Yeah, that's okay. We also, if people are interested, I could look at um, if your your budget process will pretty much be wrapped up May fifteen. So if it would give you a reprieve, we could also look at May twenty third at five o'clock to see if that. It's was wide open at this point. I think. The oh, I'm wide open. Yeah. Too. Either one of those at five will be fine. I just am thinking about for your own sanity that we yeah, could I'd potentially going to be the, a stressful the week. The 23rd so the twenty third would be a better choice. Yeah. Okay. Twenty third at five o'clock. Yeah, Oops. and we'll f we'll find space. I feel confident. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I, I thought there was yeah. a question from somebody in the. Audience Hold on. Hold on. Do you have any code to unpants? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Was there a question? Someone had a question earlier? Um, I would I encourage any of you folks with interest in this, email us. It's, it's really good for us to have it in email, at least for me, so I can see it digested. Um, and any points you want to make, it's helpful. Um, I mean, a lot of us have made suggestions.
person or someone who complains about the president they say, well, I should probably vote. Well, what do you want to do about it? You had your opportunity. Right. So, I mean, it's it been is two years now, and that's fine. I'll mm -hmm. help you come to the meetings and I'm just trying to offer advice and, you know, not trying to undermine you guys or, sure. you know, do your job. But no, and I, I know for you guys, time. you're sick of probably dealing with the same topics over and over again and you probably want to move on to other things. No, we we all signed up for this, yes, so we just went through. Well, and that, so along those <laughs> lines, what I would just right. One topic, so know. what? So along that, what I would also offer is is just considering that um, you know we're constantly talking to constituents about a host of issues, never just one issue. People might reach out about one issue, and I'm like, hey, well, I got you on the line. Well, how do you feel about blah? I I, I kind of do my own personal little testing of things sometimes just with the personal relationships that I have in and around town. And um, so, I, you know, I and, and I have friends and family and loved ones on all sides of this one. So so I kind of, I, you know, the survey, honestly, data for me is really, if you look statistically, it's insignificant. It doesn't, because yeah. most people, like you said, unless they're angry or upset, they, they often don't get involved unless we had a true comprehensive ability to conduct a, statistically significant survey, which we don't. So I take that piece and then I take the piece that I get from my personal conversations and then I take right. um, the, you know, the conversations I have with my fellow counselors into account and then, you know, just kind of, so there's a lot of things I'm, I bring into my decision making, not just one piece of it. So I hear you though and, and I, I get it. An idea that I, that one of my employees actually suggested I ask is in, after some survey, There were the uh, informational sessions were certainly posted on the Facebook page, and I we we do have a, a roundtable discussion, like which is basically an open forum. People can come talk about anything. The next one is June. Do you know, off the top of your head. I don't. It's in the twenties. Yep, tw twenty June twenty fifth. Yep. Um, at Blue Point School at six thirty, um, and I can certainly make the. So really, at those meetings. The idea is that the community drafts the agenda. Mm -hmm. So come to the meeting and get on the board and then once and we can yeah. have some further conversation. It's nice because in that we're not confined to Robert's rules per se. It's a more open dialogue. Um, so, th but definitely, um, you know, one of my goals would be throughout this process is we're uh, getting more and more uh, feedback. Because we know what will happen. We won't. As soon as we pass something, then all of a sudden, yeah, then all of a sudden, it's good. Then we'll then it's going to erupt. <laughs> so no, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you, everybody. Thanks.